Hi everyone, and welcome to how to create a Stranger Things inspired text effect in Adobe Photoshop. In this tutorial, we'll show you how to create a text effect inspired by the Stranger Things series using only layer styles and some simple adjustments. To get started, you'll need the gradient and font resources using the links in the description below. So heading into Photoshop, let's create a new document here. And we need to create a document with a width of 1280 and a height of 720. And we also want to use a specific color for our background. Now this color is going to be 0C0101, which is a very dark reddish color here. And you can click OK for that. And then we can also go ahead and name this file. So Stranger Things Effect and then click OK to get started. Now once our document has been created, we want to go ahead and use the type tool here and then just click on our document and let's go ahead and type in Stranger Things on the keyboard here like so. And then just highlighting all the text here. We want to make sure that we're using the Indira K font over here and we want to go ahead into our character tool here and let's go ahead and type in 141 for the size value and then let's also change the height of our text usually it's set to 100% but we want to set this to 115% and also we want to make sure that we've got bold ticked here and this over here as well to make sure that all of our text is uh, is capitalized. All right, so once we've done that, we also want to set the tracking value here from 50 to minus 100, like so. just to bring the text close together. And now the next thing we want to do is we want to start adjusting some of the letters here to make it more like the opening sequence title. So that includes creating a bigger S and a bigger R, for example. So let's go ahead and highlight the S here. And we want to change its size to 212. And then next we want to change the baseline shift value. So over here, the baseline shift value, we want to change this and we can just sort of move this down using our mouse until we can see that the top of the S is in line with the rest of our text here. And let's go ahead and do the same with the R. So highlighting the R here we want to change the uh, the text size to 212 like so and again using the baseline shift let's click and drag so that it's all the way down and in line with the rest of our text here as well cool so then once we've done that we need to adjust the kerning a little bit just so that it uh, looks better so just place our cursor in between the two letters and let's change the kerning here just clicking and dragging it like so giving our text a little bit more room to breathe and just doing the same to all the other letters here like that and the same all the way down to our R, just sort of giving us a little bit more space in between each of the letters. And then down here, we'll do the same. So in between each of the letters and then clicking and dragging the kerning. And you can spend a little bit more time with this just to make sure things look exactly the way that you want it. And then we're going to head into the layer styles. So let's go ahead and select our move tool here. 
and let's go to our layers and set the fill of our Stranger Things text all the way down to zero. Okay, so let's go ahead now and right click on our layer, go to blending options, and now let's go ahead and add a bevel and emboss. And over here in the settings here, let's change some of these. So the style, we want to change this to stroke emboss, and we want a depth of 220, and we want a size of three. And let's go ahead and make sure that use global, global light is checked off. And let's go ahead and have an angle of 156 with an altitude of 36 degrees. Now the gloss contour here, we want to change this. So just click on the drop down box here. And we want to find a particular one, which is cone inverted. So let's try and find that around here. I think it's this one. So cone inverted, click on that to select that. Uh, make sure that anti aliased is ticked. And we want the highlight mode here set to screen with an opacity of 35%. And the shadow mode, make sure it's set to multiply with an opacity of 50%. Cool. Now, once we've done with bevel and emboss, the next thing we want to go to is contour here. So let's tick on that. And let's make sure that our contour here is set to cove deep, which is, let's go ahead and try and find it, is this one up here. So let's click that and tick the anti aliased box here again as well. Next, we want to add a stroke. So let's click on stroke and we want to add the settings here. So let's click over here and set the size to three and the position here, instead of center, we want to put it in the inside of our text. And for the color, let's change the color here. The color code is C E one seven two five this will give us this red color and then click ok for that make sure blend mode is set to normal and now the next thing we want to do is we want to go to inner glow so let's tick inner glow here and let's set the settings here so blend mode is going to be set to screen with an opacity of 50 percent and the noise set to 5%. And over here with the color, we'll need another color code. So the color code for this is EA0F0F. Click OK for that. And over here in the elements, make sure it's set to softer with the source set to edge, choke of 0% and the size of 17% and then everything else can be set to default. Excellent, now let's go ahead to the outer glow. So find outer glow in the list here and make sure that's checked. And let's play about with these settings here. So the blend mode is set to screen with an opacity of 50% and the noise is set to 5%. And again, let's change the color. So the color here is going to be E a2314 click OK for that and then over here in the elements we want to set the technique to softer with a spread of 0% and a size of 12% then over in the quality we'll set this to the default and we'll only change the range which is going to be 60% like so excellent now let's go ahead and click OK. And you'll see how this has changed the look of our text, like so. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create the rectangular shapes on the top of our text here and on the sides of our text here. Now I've just noticed there's a little bit of a imbalance in the gap here. So let's go ahead and go back to our text tool. Go next to our S at the bottom here. We're just going to change the value here so that it's a little bit more balanced 
in between our font like so cool now once we've done that let's go to our rectangular tool here and we're just going to create some basic shapes so just a line at the top here like so and then we can go ahead and duplicate this layer so let's right click duplicate this layer and let's move this down and press Control T to just bring this over to the side here like so and then duplicate that so right click duplicate and then move this to the side here like so just so that we've got a similar height uh, thickness for our lines and then once we've done that let's go ahead and highlight all of our rectangles and set the fill value to 0% and now we're going to be ready to create the style for our rectangles so let's highlight all of these and right click and we're going to merge the shapes together and then right click again and let's go to blending options cool now let's go ahead and add a bevel and emboss for this and the settings are going to be very similar to the ones that we did before for the text but we'll just change a few values here and there to make it look a little bit better so for the bevel and emboss we're going to change the size from 3 to 2 then we're going to add a stroke and we're going to set the size from 3 to 2 again and this time we're going to set the position from inside to outside next we're going to go to inner glow and we're going to change the settings here so go down to size in elements and change the setting from 17 to 5 and then with the outer glow here so let's check outer glow and we're going to change the size here from 12 to 17 and then click OK cool and now you'll see our bars here have a similar sort of setting or look to our text which is excellent now let's go ahead and put everything in a group so create a new folder here and let's call this text effect and let's click and drag these both into the text effect here like so and now we're going to right click and go into blending options and we're going to adjust some of these settings here so let's add a gradient overlay so check gradient overlay here and let's check the dither box here and the blend mode we're going to change this to soft light and the style is going to be reflected with an angle of 135 and over here with the gradient let's go ahead and change some of the colors here so just clicking over here let's change the color to F B E uh, 7 C 2 okay and over on the right this color stop here let's change the color here to E 6 9 F99 like so cool and then click OK for that and we're going to add another gradient overlay so let's click over here and for our second gradient overlay let's go ahead and change the blend mode here to overlay and with an angle here of 135 and this time we're going to change the gradient here and use one of the gradients that we downloaded so we're looking for facet 10 so click on that and then click OK and now we're going to add an outer glow here and for this outer glow we're going to set the opacity to 20% and change the color here to DE1B22 click OK and we want to change the size to 34 
and let's change the range here to 60 like so and you can see here how that's enhanced the effect of our text cool so let's click OK and now let's go ahead and add some light spots so let's go and create a new layer and let's set the foreground color here to 451 D08 click OK and let's call this layer here light and over here we want to change the blend mode to color dodge like so cool now let's go ahead and click on the brush tool here and then using a soft round tip just click around on some parts of the text here just to highlight some bits like so cool and then once you're happy with the way this looks we can go ahead and create a new adjustment layer so let's go ahead and click on, on the button here and we want to use hue and saturation and we want to change the saturation here to 35 and the lightness to 15 like so and in fact let's that's a little bit too bright so let's change it to 5 and now over here let's go back to our layers and we want to add a, another adjustment layer so let's go over here and click on gradient click on the gradient bar here and we're just going to change some of these colors so over on the right let's change the color here and this color is going to be 5c 456e click OK and then over on the left we'll change the color here to FDA982 and we also want to have a color in the center here. so click at the bottom here to create a new color stop and let's put the location at 50% and let's change the color in the center to B26B73 like so and click OK and then click OK again and over here we want to change the style to reflected so click on that and we want to change the angle here to 155 and the scale to 55 percent like so and then click OK and we want to change the gradient layer blend mode to color like so and change the opacity just to bring it down a little bit to 35 percent excellent so that's it for this tutorial have fun creating your own stranger things text effects and i'll see you next time on tut plus